So here we are on the page for our dry wood here. Now we just we just finished fixing our dried candy caps and, and turning them from a uh, from a simple product into a variable product. But here we've got our dry wood here, and uh, and it's already it already is a variable product. But the problem is when anybody chooses a variation, they're not getting any difference in price. They're getting the same price, and there's no variation selected automatically when they come come out here to look at this. So let's go ahead and come into the product and see what's going on here. So here we are in our dried wood here, and I'm going to come down, and we see that we've got variable product selected here for our product data. Perfect. We've got our SKU already put in there. Awesome. So let's come down to attributes. We've got our dried mushroom sizes, and you'll see here we have perfect. We've got dried mushroom sizes. We've got it selected that it's supposed to be used for variations. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Then over here we've got our we've got our, our different variations selected. Our three ounce, our one ounce, our two ounce, our four ounce. Okay. This is all set up fine. Um, they've the 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 dried mushroom sizes was selected from the list here. It was not it was not added as a custom product attribute. It was added uh, down here from the list, and it has been selected to be used for variations in these four variations on size have been selected. Okay, perfect. That's already been saved. Now let's go down to variations. And now we see what our problem is. These variations aren't linking any of those sizes. So we've created some variations. There are four variations here, but it's not linking to any size and we don't have any default size. We've got our sizes selected here to link to, but we don't have any of them linked to. So let's open each one of these up and see what's going on and, and, and see what we need to do here. Okay, so here we've got our SKU, and it says wood ear dash one ounce. So it's got a dash and, a, and the uh, the size added to the standard SKU, which is, is pretty standard. We've got our price in there. Good, good. But we don't have a weight, so we need to add a weight. And then we need to select which size this is, and that is one ounce. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to come through each of these, and I'm going to select a corresponding size. I'm going to open them up. Make sure we've got our price, make sure our SKU is unique, and I'm going to add our missing weight here on each one of them. So we select a 3 ounce, we've got our SKU variation right there, we've got our price in here, and we just need to add our weight. Okay, one more here, that's fine, the price is good, let's go ahead and add that weight. Okay, so now we've selected a variation for all of these. We've added in the corresponding weight down here into weight, and this is for shipping. We've put in our price. Now the only thing we need to do is choose a default, and I'm going to go ahead and choose one ounce as the default. Now when I come up and click update, and I come over here, and I refresh the page. Now I'm going to see a different, a different page. One, um, we're automatically going to have one ounce selected. And now as I scroll through these, you're going to see this changes. And I can choose what different size I want, and the corresponding price will change. Um, if I remove, clear, uh, select, a, if I uncheck choose an option, that, that will get rid of the add to cart button because a person needs to, to select something before it can add to cart. Since this is variable product, uh, the person has to select something. When they first come on the page, they'll automatically have one ounce selected. So they can just go, oh, okay, boom, one ounce, you know, I'd like to try that, boom, and add it to cart. They can clear the selection, which will do the same thing. But once they're on one, one ounce, they can go through and variate and choose what they want. And you'll see now, since we link those up, the prices are changing like they're supposed to. So um, anyway, that was um, how you fix that particular that particular um, issue with uh, that variable product. The that in, in that variable product, once again, our, our issue was the fact that our attributes were set up correctly, but our variations were not linked. Um, and so we needed to link our variations to our attributes, and we also needed to add in the size. And we're adding in the size not for the attribute, um, not for the variation itself, um, it's for the shipping on the variation is what we're adding in the weight here for. So that's why that's required. This variation will save, as you saw, without adding in a weight, but if you don't add in a weight right here for the variation, then it will not calculate correct shipping. In fact, it may not even calculate shipping at all if it doesn't have a weight to go off of. So when creating variable products in the system, it's very important that you remember they each must have a unique SKU, 
and the easiest way to do that is to tag it on with a dash and then the size. I put it all in capitals and the reason that I do that is because it's very easy for the I to flow over that. Capitalize the first portion of the SKU, the, the first letter of the SKU, and people can easily see that's Woodier and then they see a dash and their eyes go directly to this all capitalized and shows them the variation of size, gives them that size. We've already got a price in here which is required and then we just had to add our weight. So remember this lets everybody know exactly what the unique product is. It is woodier, but it's a one ounce size. This is our variation for that particular size, and this is the weight that we need to add in, and we need to add this in for the shipping, and because this is where the shipping is going to calculate that actual weight. So anyway, um, that is uh, how you fix that variable product in the system.